All right, hello YouTube, this is Ahi. So, in this week's tutorial we will edit some guitars. And we will do it two ways. We will do it so that we will first edit the DI track and then we reamp it. For this example I will use a amp sim because it's like uh, almost midnight and I don't want to make some noise so I'm using this kind of set up on Waves GDR. I have four instances of on all of the DI tracks. And then we'll try a method where we will edit both the DI and the guitar track at the same time. So that we will use the DI as a guide track, but say we recorded the guitars through a very nice sounding rig, but you have no access to it later ever again. So you want to edit the guitar track also. Okay, let's get started. So, first, let's listen what we have here. So, I'm playing the DI tracks with the Waves GTR. And here I have the bass track and the drums. If you are wondering, they are not clipping, I'm just zooming in quite a bit. Okay, so let's listen. Okay, so that was the track, and what we will start with is that we will go through the very basic editing options in Pro Tools. I personally don't like Elastic Audio, but I will use it if I have to, but I prefer doing the so-called slip editing, which is not slip editing, I think it's like just manual editing, and the same way that Beat Detective does the thing, but I still prefer to do it by hand. So. You only need a few keys. You need B, as in banana. So you click here, press B, and it makes a cut. And then you need a comma and full stop to nudge it around. And those are all the buttons you need. And if you want, you can also use M and whatever is right next to the full stop on your keyboard on mine it's a dash, but on American uh, keyboard it's a slash, I think. Okay, so what we'll start with is that I have the drums here. I'll just hide these. Let's zoom in on the DI tracks. And what we'll start with is that I'll turn off the groups. And for each track I will make a cut in the beginning. And at the end of the loop, which would be around here. So in case I really fuck up something, I want to screw up the whole song, but only that part. And what we'll start with is that we will make a new playlist. You do it by you, that you turn on the groups, then you select all the tracks and then you just select duplicate which makes a new playlist for all of the tracks. And then you turn off the groups again. And so now you have a new playlist. In my case, it's 02. I made a previous edit on the 01 track, so don't be alarmed in later on. Okay, so what we'll do is that we'll just take the one track and we'll align it to the drums, which is here. And remember, you don't have to be sample specific. I'm doing the notch with uh, 100 sample accuracy. But if you want, you can always do it. But you can also use milliseconds. I prefer 10 milliseconds. So when you notch it around, it makes a big, big leap. So, but the 100 samples I prefer that because it's a bit less it's like four but I think you can actually just dial it in if you want so this would be 10 milliseconds with the sample rate 
So if I go to here and select three milliseconds, you know, something like that. And then we make a cut on the next hit, align them. And then you just, you know, rinse and repeat for all the hits that needs editing. But remember, if something is on hit, like this for example, don't you don't need to cut it. You can look, like move it that 9 milliseconds, but it's not necessary if you don't want to. And also remember, when you have made the edits, you should always listen to the whole track what has happened. If you hear that there is a massive gap like this, and when you do the open the fade, you might hear that there is a wrong note. You should maybe use elastic audio or copy from a previous point, that same section, so that you don't hear an error there, because you rather have a bit of copy paste than errors in there. Or something like that. That's my preference at least. Okay, so I'll just finish editing this first loop and then we'll come back. Okay, so now we have done the first few bars on the loop and let's listen how it sounds. So here is the before. And here's the after. So now it sounds more like it's one guitar instead of uh, four. Which was kind of the point here. And for the crossfades, I have found that if you have very large gaps, like some like something like this, you might have to double check that if there is a problem, but I have noticed that if you can hear it in the mix, just fuck it. And I, in Pro Tools, I like to use the beat detective for the crossfades. You know, something. Some people say that use two milliseconds, some say ten, some they say five. Let's use the five, and then we'll check if there is anything that looks fishy. You know. Looks good so far. Oops, forgot that one. Okay. So let's just move it. And you can always do it manually, you know, like this instead if you prefer. But always check that when you do the crossfades that the, there is no the, that you don't get any of the double hits so that the old end is coming through. Okay. You. And we are at the end of the Mark, so let's just mark the area. Select all of, oops, select all of the parts there. And use color or something. Clips in tracks and let's say they are red. That's in done, okay? And then let's just continue. I'll do the rest of the song and you'll hear how it sounds. Okay, so now we are done. And here is the cross-faded and edited version. Let's listen to it. And if we compare it to the old one. Yeah, 
yeah, personally, I don't think I'm that good of a guitar player, but I can, I mean, I played all these in one take, so, but the editing takes it to that next level that gives you that last 10% of the tightness that you need for this kind of music. And after you're done, you know, just select all of the tracks, go to File, Edit, and Consolidate Clips or Regions if you're using older version. And that's about it. Okay, so welcome back. What about if you had a really good amp sound already? So let's listen to the tracks that I recorded with the Marshall that I have. You know, not the best sound in the world, but it sounds okay. Okay, so, so we want to use that sound, and we don't have ever, ever access to that rig again. So what we'll do is that we'll turn on the groups, but we'll turn off the current groups that we have, and then we group the DI track with the same guitar track. So, for example, here I'll make a new track, a new group called G1, and this will be G2, G3, and G4. All right, so the same thing, we'll do, make a new playlist. So now we have a new playlist of all of those. So let's start with the procedure. First, I'll just color them all to some really nice color so that I'm not confused by the differences in the color. Okay. All right. So remember the amp track is really just a blob of blobs. So you just can't use that. So what we'll do is that we will make the DI track a bit bigger and then we'll make the judgments based on that and since we see that there shouldn't be anything before this we'll just make a cut here remove these same here I think it's just some you know handling noise so just remove them and all right, so same thing. Let's make a cut here, 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 and here. So we'll do the first loop. So let's see. I have the tab to transient on. So if I make a few cuts here and there. Let's see how good the... Detection is on the so if I if you are wondering I'm using tab to transient which is this button here and then pressing tab and just making the cuts before the track the correct places. So this is just another method to doing the this kind of editing. Okay, so then we press save, then command zero, and it quantizes them to correct places if you don't want to do it manually, but you still have to check it manually that everything should be in correct places. After that you go to event, be detective, Fill and crossfade, same way as previously. And then you'll just listen if it sounds okay.
yeah, my playing still sucks, but you know, at least it's in time now. So we'll do the same thing for the other tracks, and we'll continue when I'm done. Okay, welcome back. So now I have edited the track, and let's listen how it sounds. Okay, and if we compare it to the original. Okay, as you might have heard, the most parts sound, at least in my opinion, way better. So, I guess we do that now. Okay, so at least in my opinion, sounds way better than before. And the best part about this kind of editing is that you can always use the DI as backup when you have edited the amp tracks. And remember, if you don't hear it in the mix, it doesn't matter if there is some minor error. But it doesn't matter how it sounds soloed only matters how it sounds in context and when you are done remember to save as and then do a consolidate because in case you fuck up or make a new playlist so that listen so just in case make a new duplicate playlist for all the tracks okay so now we have a new duplicate playlist of all the tracks And then let's make it so that it starts from the beginning of the session and a little at the end. And then consolidate clip. So now it doesn't have to read it all the time from the disk. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial at least somehow useful. Uh, please write in the comments below. If you have any questions or comments, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. I make new videos every week. And thank you for watching and make good music. Oh yeah, if you want to, you know, practice the guitar editing, I'll just post the DIY up. So you can find it in the description box below. Bye!